Hi, what's going on? All right, we're going to back up what we've been doing with justifying statements about equations in order to now justify statements about geometric figures. In the previous video that I made for you guys, we were looking at how you use properties of equality in order to justify the steps that you use in the process of solving an equation. Now, we're still going to be working with properties of equality, but those properties of equality are going to involve either segment lengths or angle measures. And we're going to use them to justify statements about geometric figures. Now, in our previous video that I referred to a moment ago, we were learning to use properties of equality, including the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and substitution properties in order to justify statements about equations. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to learn a few new properties in order to justify statements made about figures. And these will still be properties of equality. And we're going to begin with the reflexive property, which at first glance seems to be the most obvious thing in the world. And it kind of is, to be honest. But it is nevertheless a property that will be useful to us, especially when we do congruent triangle proofs later on in our course. The reflexive property can be looked at this way. If you're looking at the reflexive property of equality for real numbers, it means that for any real number A, that number is equal to itself. So 7 equals 7. Pi equals pi. Negative two-thirds equals negative two-thirds. That's what that means. Now, each of the properties that I'm going to go through right now, I'm going to show you what it looks like for real numbers, but I also want to show you what it looks like when distances and angle measures are involved because that's what we'll be using it more, more frequently for in this course. So let's look at distances now. If I was to have a distance A, B, it's guaranteed that the distance from A to B equals the distance from A to B. Again, it seems obvious, but it's the reflexive property that tells you that, and that will be useful. And similarly, if I have an angle A, then the measure of angle A is going to be equal to itself. Reflexive property of equality. Okay, now for the symmetric property of equality, which I actually referenced in the last video. The symmetric property of equality is, for with real numbers anyway, if you have two quantities that are equal to one another, then what you're allowed to do is you're allowed to switch which side of the equation each of those quantities is written on. Instead of writing A on the left and B on the right, you could just as easily say put B on the left and A on the right side of the equal sign, and you would still have a true statement. All right, so how would that look with distances? Well, if I had the distance from A to B and C to D, and I knew that those were equal, AB equals CD, then I also know that CD equals AB, very simple. And if I have any angles A and B, and I know that the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B, well, then I can turn that equation around using the symmetric property of equality and say that the measure of angle B equals the measure of angle A. So that's the reflexive and symmetric properties. One more to look at, and that's called the transitive property of equality. For real numbers, that looks this way. If you have any numbers A, B, and C, such that A and B are equal and B and C are equal, then it's guaranteed that A is equal to C. Now, this one might take a little more explanation, but simply we're basically saying that A and C are both equal to B, and so they have to be equal to one another. Now, how would that look with distances? Well, if I had three distances, A, B, C, D, and E, F, such that A, B equals C, D, and C, D equals E, F, then that means that A, B equals E, F. All right, now you probably see this without me giving you any further hints, but now that we're getting into distances, I think this one requires a little more explanation. You're going to notice that A, B, and E, F are both equal to this same distance, C, D, and so if they're both equal to that same distance, then we can say that they're equal to one another as well. And then we can do the same thing with angle measures. If we have angles A, B, and C, and we know the measure of angle A and B are equal, and the measure of angle B and C are equal, then the measure of angle A and C are equal. For the same basic reason, if we know that the measure of angle A and the measure of angle C are both equal, to the same thing, the measure of angle B, then these two things 
have to be equal to one another. That's the transitive property of equality. Now let's see if you can recognize those properties being put into use. I've got a few examples here, and the examples directions say to name the property of equality that justifies the statement that's being made. Alright, so let's go through and do this. First of all, it says that the measure angle K equals 35 degrees, and the measure angle G equals the measure angle K, then the measure angle G equals 35 degrees. Well, which property that we just referred to would that be? Well, notice here that I have two different quantities, 35 degrees and the measure angle G, that are each equal to the same thing, the measure angle K. And so since they're each equal to the same thing, that makes them equal to one another. Can you see how that's the transitive property of equality? There you go. How about the next one? If FG is equal to ST, then FG plus XY equals ST plus XY. Well, I'm tricking you a little bit. This is not from this video. It's from the previous video. But it's still a fairly obvious one, I hope. You're going to notice in the two equations that I have an FG and an ST on the left and right side, respectively, in each equation. But the thing that happened is that in the second equation, I added an equivalent value, XY, to both sides of the equation. And if any time, at any time you add the same thing to both sides of the equation, then you've got the addition property of equality at work. All right. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because we were just doing it with regular numbers before, but isn't a distance a real number? So you can do that with distances as well. Addition property of equality. All right, now here's another property that we used in the last video, it turns out, but I want to make sure that you're still able to take all of these properties of equality and kind of work with them and understand them all. Now, this says if one-fifth of the difference of x and 2 is equal to 12, then x minus 2 is equal to 60. Well, this was simply an equation. It has nothing to do with distances or angle measures. But what happened was we canceled out the one-fifth from the left side of this equation to make this equation. And how do you do that? Well, you cancel out one-fifth by multiplying by 5, don't you? And isn't 12 times 5 going to give you 60? So what happened there was we used the multiplication property of equality. And then the final example here on this particular set of examples, we've got one more problem to work through, but in this set of examples is this. If JK equals MN, the distance from J to K equals the distance from M to N, then M to N equals J to K. Now notice all that we did is we took the quantity on the left side and the right side and we switched which side they were on. And which property was that where we said you could just switch which side two equal expressions were on in an equation? Well, that was the symmetric property of equality. And so that's what we'll write here. Symmetric property of equality. All right, well, now this is going to look pretty tough to you at the beginning, this next thing that I want to do. But we are talking about justifying, justifying statements about figures, and so I need to include an example of that within this video. And what we're going to be doing here is justifying a statement that happens to deal with angles. All right? Now, it says here in the diagram that the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3. And it wants us to fill in the reasons for the logical argument that shows that the measure of angle JKN equals the measure of angle MKL. Now, this logical argument basically follows the same format as the solving equations did in the previous video, right? Except that rather than just having normal equations like x plus 3 equals 4, we have equations involving angle measures. Or the similar thing could happen if we had distances involved. All right, so we'll have a bunch of statements, and what we're doing is making a logical argument, where we're basically saying, if statement one is true, then statement two is true, and if statement two is true, then statement three is true, and so forth, and then we're giving reasons why we know that each of the statements on the left are true, and you have to justify every step along the way. Well, it's very key when you're working with logical arguments about figures that you plan out the argument first. Now, in this case, you were lucky enough to have all these statements written down for you ahead of time, which doesn't mean that they're all given. I'll get to that here in a little bit. But we do need to understand why all those statements would be there. And so I wanted to start with the premise that we're given, that we have two equal angle measures, 1 and 3, and 
go through the logic that would lead us to conclude that the measure of angle JKN, this angle right here, would be equal in measure to MKL's measure. Now one thing that you ought to do pretty much every time is if you have information that you're supposing to be true, and this is the premise of your entire proof, that measure of angle 1 equals measure of angle 3, then you ought to mark that on the diagram. So we're supposing then that these two angles are congruent. And then we're going to try to prove that this angle, the measure angle JKN, has the same measure as this angle MKL. And why would that be true? Well, here what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up hypothetical numbers to explain that the thing has to be true. And then we'll do it without those specific numbers. And I'll explain that better here in a moment. But let's just suppose that the measure of angle 1 was equal to, let's say, 30 degrees. Now, under our supposition then that the measures of angles 1 and 3 are equal, that would lead us to conclude that the measure of angle 3 is also 30 degrees, correct? Now, angle 2 is not supposed to be the same as angles 1 or 3. could be, but it's not supposed to be necessarily. So let's suppose that angle 3 had a measure of, I don't know, 70 degrees. Wouldn't it be true, then, that if you combined angles 1 and 2 in order to make the measure of angle JKN, that it would be 100 degrees? And if you combine angles 2 and 3 in order to make the measure of angle MKL, it would also have to be 100 degrees, right? So, if angle 1 and angle 3 are congruent with our made-up numbers, you can see how the measure of angle JKN would have to be equal to the measure of angle MKL. Now, we can't actually use specific numbers in our proof, so I'm going to erase those. But the logic that we just used, we can apply to this logical argument. Now, you ought to just copy down the statements and reasons columns if you have not already done so for your notes. And what I'd like to do now is go and explain where each of these statements came from, and then we'll write down the reason that justifies that those things are true. Starting with the fact that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. That was the whole premise upon which this logical argument is based. And whatever premise it is that you start with is always the premise that you are given, we would say. So we would justify that fact for this problem by saying that it's given. All right. Well, if the measure of angle 1 equals measure of angle 3, then why would the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 have to equal the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 2? Well, notice what's happened here is that we've taken that same equation for number from the first statement, and we still have the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 3 on either side, but what we've done is we added equivalent values to either side of the equation, right? The measure of angle 2 is what was added to both sides of the equation, and any time you add the same thing to both sides of the equation, you have used, of course, the addition property of equality. And that's what justifies statement two. All right. Well, then what is this next step about where it says the measure angle one plus the measure angle two equals the measure angle JKN? We haven't seen anything about angle JKN in our logical argument so far. So where did that come from all of a sudden? Well, sometimes with geometry, when you're trying to make statements about geomet geometric figures, you actually have to look at the picture in order to figure out what some of those statements are. In my reasoning where I was saying that the measure of angle JKN was ultimately going to be equal to the measure of angle MKL, I said that you create angle JKN by combining angles 1 and 2, right? Isn't that the angle addition postulate, that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 would have to equal the measure of angle JKN because they're adjacent angles, and we're just adding the two smaller parts and getting the larger part. And the same could be said about making the measure of angle MKL using angles 3 and 2 combined. And that's all these equations say is when you combine angles 1 and 2, it makes angle JKN. And when you combine angles 3 and 2, it makes angle MKL. So angle addition postulate is what would justify that statement. Now notice that's different than the addition property of equality. This is about when you combine two adjacent angles to make a larger angle, and this is when you add the same thing to both sides of the equation. Well, let's look at the final statement here. 
where it says that the measure of angle JKN equals the measure of angle MKL. Now this is going to be based off of the previous two or statements combined, basically. First of all, you're going to notice JKN and MKL. Those measures were referred to in the very previous statement right here. The measure of angle JKN was on the right side of the top equation. Measure of angle MKL was on the right side of the bottom equation. Well, look at what those two things were equivalent to. All right, we said the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 made one of those. The measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 2 made the other. And if you look at the statement above, let me erase the color that's already there. Didn't we already say that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 2? Now, I'm going to lead you into what this actually is. Essentially, I'm saying we have some value A that's equal to some value B. And then that same value B is equal to some value C. And if A and C are both equal to B, then they have to be equal to one another, don't they? And that is the transitive property of equality that would tell us that that is a true statement. And so that's what I'm going to use to justify that. All right, so there's your first taste of proving statements about figures, and we did so using properties of equality. We'll do a whole lot more of justifying statements about figures throughout this course. Hopefully that makes sense, and you will get to practice with this a little bit more within class. All right, guys, thanks for your hard work and understanding. Make sure that you prepare questions for class in case there are things you didn't understand about this. Talk to you then. Bye.